Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering Knowledge 15, brought to you by ServiceNow. Hi, we're back to the Mandalay Bay here in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE, theCUBE goes out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. This is our third knowledge conference. This is Knowledge15, hashtag No15. We've seen the evolution of ServiceNow, the expansion of ServiceNow's business from almost a pure IT service management into lines of business. In particular, we're going to talk about the HR function in some depth. I'm here with Mark Shank and David Kostar. Mark is the managing director uh, and David is head of the uh, people and change practice at KPMG. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Great to Thank see you. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. So Mark, let me start with you. What is different? Everybody's talking you know, IT service management and extending into new parts of the organization. What's different about what KPMG brings to the table? Sure, I, I think uh, you know, what I'm seeing KPMG do that I don't see out in the market is you know, we, we bring a breadth of services to bear uh, as a large organization that um, you know, has a, a broad set of capability. We can, we can take professional process consulting uh, and combine that with uh, a digital design and delivery capability and, and also combined with an enterprise service implementation like ServiceNow. So, okay, so Mark, you're, <coughs> a, you're a design expert and David, you're an HR process expert. So right. how do those two worlds come together? Yeah, so, so what's really nice is it's, it's two disciplines that have to work together. So when we think about innovative design, it's all about the new hire experience. When we think about the new hire experience, it's all about having effective and efficient HR processes so that it spills into the, the ultimate HR customer, which is the employee themselves. So having an engaging solution, an engaging experience, directly drives into the value of what HR is trying to bring to an organization and really only can be accomplished through the, the innovative design that we have through digital. So, we've heard a lot of talk at this conference about onboarding. Yeah. Um, you're not ignoring the rest of the life cycle, are you? <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I wonder if you could, could talk about that. I mean, why, why the focus on onboarding? Obviously, because there's so much pain and it's so important. Yeah. But what about the rest of the life cycle? Uh, well, why onboarding, I think, is, is, is an important question to address. Yeah, and, then, sure. and then the rest of the life cycle definitely will hit. Why onboarding? Is this the one universal challenge that, that spans across every business, spans across every sector, spans across every level, right? Yet it's often the most fragmented and disconnected process that exists across an enterprise. So when you think about the HR component, you could have multiple systems of record for HR that, that tie into onboarding, your applicant tracking system, your background check vendor, your um, you know, um, I-9 uh, provider. Then you go over to IT and you have all of the provisioning and then you have security and you have facilities and you have location and the list goes on, right? So. The reason we believe onboarding is, is, is the perfect entry point is it is the one area that we have heard time and again, not just from our customers as we've been doing ServiceNow work with them, but also from ourselves. So as, as we are acquiring companies, as we are bringing in new employees, a consistent theme is onboarding hurts. We need to do it better. It's very expensive. And the experience that our new hires have is inferior and that inferiority is costing us money. Right off the bat. And the, right off and the, the bat. research backs it up. I mean, employees decide, over 80% of employees decide within the six, first six months whether or not they're going to stay for multiple years. Uh, you know, I mean, there, there's a lot of research out there that says, you know, you only get <coughs> that one chance to make a first impression. And, uh, and, and so your, your ability to retain uh, competitive talent is, you know, you, you, can't, you can't lose that opportunity. I'm always intrigued when large companies that have been around for a while put so much emphasis on design and the UX, and it's relatively new. Mm -hmm. That's a new, relatively new trend. Sure. How did you come to be at KPMG? I got acquired. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but so again, I mean, you know, you see yeah. companies going out. I mean, Infor yeah. buys the hook and loop, and yeah. you know, KPMG yeah. acquiring your company. Yeah. Very interesting trends going on. What do you make of it? Well, it, it's, um, you know, so obviously the, the the kind of digital mobile space as a whole has has really grown as smartphone adoption and tablets and everything have. have taken over the market in the last seven years or so. And so, uh, part of it is just re a reflection of the reality of, of the prevalence of these devices and then we need to bring a skill set to the table. But, you know, really it's just, it's the idea that it's, uh, it's, it's the glue 
between so many of the, so from KPMG's perspective, so many of the services that they would offer to their clients, digital is the part that binds so many of these things together. Because you know we are that, that one consistent element of you know whether it's HR or whether it's enterprise shared services or whether you know it, it's uh, it's actual you know doing work for the C-suite or you know any of these things. D digital is a part of all of that and allows you to kind of uh, join those opportunities together to be able to deliver more value for your client. So it's interesting. There's a lot of talk. Obviously, you talk to <coughs> CIOs, CEOs. Everybody's trying to figure out, okay, how can I digitize my business? A digital good is replicable, you get the yeah. software economies of scale. A piece of fruit you eat, it's gone. I, you know, we can't share it, right? right. I, I eat it, David can't have a, have a bite. Um, so, but people talk about that for, pr primarily for the external facing portions of the business. You guys are digitizing, essentially, in this example, an HR process. So, what's driving that? Um, where are we in that journey? Is there more attention being paid to the external, or is there more attention being paid to the internal? Are they sort of going in sync? What do you guys think there's, about that? There's a huge opportunity in the market uh, to, to bring a consumer-grade experience to your internal employees, and, and companies are starting to recognize the value of that approach. Onboarding is a, is a multi-multi-million dollar problem for any big company. <coughs> if, you can, if you can cut four or five days on time to productivity, then you've saved tens of millions of dollars. If you can, if you can um, increase retention, you know, you're, you're eliminating uh, the cost of the soft and hard costs of forty to one hundred thousand dollars to actually replace that that employee, uh, and so you know the, these problems are big, and uh, it's not so much uh, about pretty pictures. It's not so much about just making something that looks cool. Uh, visual aesthetic is is just the standard in the industry now. You have to make stuff that looks good, but it's really about uh, designing for people and designing for the journey that the employee is on. And it's and if if you're going to have you take care of your employees, they'll take care of your customers. So it's that, that employee journey crosses over with a customer journey. It's, well, it's interesting, Mark, you say that. Um, you said off, off camera that, that visual design is the table stakes. Yeah. But there's a lot of crappy looking software <laughs> out there. You know? I mean, is that, <laughs> maybe that's going to change yeah. over the next decade. I presume it has to, particularly with what? mobile and... Yeah, and Dave, Dave, I think the, the driver behind a lot of that crappy software that you refer to is <clears throat> it, it's compliance driven. Right, so, so why, why did applicant tracking systems come into creation? Because compliance and regulation increased and the need for a more digital format of tracking steps within a process to ensure that fair hiring practices were done for all hire types was able to be reported upon, right? That is the driver. So when, when, when you asked about you know, what else in the talent spectrum, hmm. we really believe onboard is the tip of the spear. Um, and, and driving that experience is, is critical but it's also making sure that it's not being built for compliance purposes. Compliance is very much a part of it, but it's having the experience that builds together some bridges between those different silos that onboarding encompasses. So you're talking about building, the mission being productivity improvements for the organization and delivering business value and business outcomes. Absolutely. Not just ticking boxes on, on compliance. Anybody can have task management. In fact, there's hundreds of task management capabilities that are in the marketplace today. It's, it's more than task management. It's building that engagement. It's streamlining the workflows. It's, it's crossing the bridges between the various disciplines within yeah. the organization. I mean, most people look at employee onboarding as, you know, here's 70 tasks. We, we, we do this for customers. They say, okay, here are the 71 tasks that have to happen for an employee to be onboarded. Uh, and, and then you look at the solution we actually build around it. Maybe a third of our screen real estate is on those tasks. Yeah. Two thirds of the screen real estate is on what someone might view as extraneous information, but what we're seeing is opportunities to add a lot of value is you know the giving them more context, getting them more connected into their organization, getting them to know the people on their teams, getting them uh, you know more information about their organization that they just joined or opportunities within that organization to join, whether it's charities or different kind of groups that are happening inside. It's those are the things that are going to uh, increase your productivity, your engagement, your retention. The, the tasks are tasks, and anybody can help you get a, down a bullet list of tasks and check those boxes, but those by themselves are not going to move the needle on the metrics that you're, that you're so going So kind after. of a did you know on the, yeah. well, <laughs> on it, the it, it accelerates the acculturation that, that, that typically happens organically over a period of 30 to 60 to 90 days. It, it starts that acculturation process before you arrive. Well, and you guys have a lot of, maybe you have a reputation for knowledge management and knowledge transfer, so you must have data on this. So how did you use that data to 
sort of design this new process, new system, new set of apps. Yeah. So a lot of the data is <clears throat> is based on what we're finding in the marketplace. Mark alluded to it earlier. Yeah. The, the business case is easy mm -hmm. when, when you really strip away all of the noise. Um, the fact that you have uh, a greater likelihood of engagement increasing by 20% for new hires who have an effective onboarding experience. So think of the impact of an increased engagement of your new hire population of being more than 20%, that's significant. You know, Mark, Mark used the, the stat of over 80% within the first six months determine whether or not they're going to stay. Well, think of the impact if those people decide to leave, even if half of them decide to leave. You know, forget about the impact to the customer base that those, those new hires are interacting with or the workload that has to be offset and, and picked up by other peers that, that the, the, the new hire who has left um, you know, is no longer doing. But it goes beyond that, right? It, it, it goes directly into cost, your traditional HR metrics, cost of hiring, cost of attrition. Right, and some of those hard costs that go into it. Um, we really believe that that coupled with the time to productivity piece, coupled with the increased efficiency within the back office workflows that, that, that are struggling within the onboarding process itself, provide both direct and indirect costs that, that make it an easy business case. So what specifically are we talking about here? Products or services that you're going to market with? Is it apps, is it new services, is it a combination? It's a, it's a ser it's a service, right? So we 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 bring a lot of intellectual property to the table. You know, whether it's uh, data that we have in the in the HR space as a result of the services we provide, but also you know we bring a uh, a, a code base around this product that you know is that is there and can sit inside a service now and and uh, you know be delivered. But at the end of the day, it's a it's a it's a process where we come in and we say, okay, let's figure out your target operating model that's probably going to use 80% of the code base that we have because everybody's target operating model is going to be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Let's customize the last 20% and, and integrate and deliver on ServiceNow. Okay. It, it's really bringing the breadth of the firm, right? So it's having the, the, um, the, the benefit of our people and change practice, our digital practice, our, 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 our engineering practice to build those integrations. It's, it's the breadth of the firm and it's a turnkey solution that you get in return. And we've been talking about HR, Mark, but are you specializing in HR or is that your starting point? <coughs> are you doing sort of other things within KPMG? Yeah, no, I mean, we're, so so this model, um, I think, where you take a, an enterprise platform, uh, a digital um, uh, piece of intellectual property and, and an industry-specific uh, consultant, um, is, is something that we're going to the market with broadly and, and really in, in as many sectors as KPMG themselves are facing. So we're, uh, we're moving in uh, financial services for the, for the CFO suite and, and around you know, products for, for there. We're moving into enterprise service management. Um, you know, we're going into, we're, as I was saying earlier about the glue, you know, we're, we're taking this offering to a lot of different places and it allows for a lot of um, you know, further opportunity to, to build enterprise solutions. And David, you said that um, onboarding is the tip of the spear. That's what you, you know, mentioned before. What's that roadmap look like? You got a good business plan ahead of you. Can you talk about that a little bit? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about the, yeah. how about the no, no, so, talk so, in terms of customer Yeah, yeah in, in, all, in all seriousness, yeah. <laughs> we, really, we really believe there, there's a huge opportunity within the marketplace. Um, onboarding represents a, a, an often neglected component that is critical in the hire to retire spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, we believe that the opportunity ahead of us is, is limitless. Um, where our clients take us, uh, leveraging what we've started with Onboard, uh, we have some anticipations, but, but I would tell you if you think about the talent management spectrum, more short term, we see this as being that top layer that sits atop the talent ecosystem. So even post day 90 when you are you are into the in the organization at that point you've completed your onboarding activities um, many clients are telling us that other things such as offboarding right such as contractor management or um, uh, temporary workers uh, contingent labor there's a lot of opportunities to where we're not replacing those systems of record but we're that intelligent skin that really rests atop those systems of record and as an employee or as a service provider, as a contractor to that organization, I always have one place to go to access those disparate, often not interconnected systems, such as my performance management system or my LMS or my time entry system, right? So all of those things that you have to do as a resource to the organization, 
this gives you that landing spot or that, that launching pad into it. So that's a destination that's going to be visited much more frequently than the individual bespoke you destinations. Bet. Right, so what does that mean from a you know, user experience standpoint? Well, I mean, I guess that's the nice thing about, about what we do. I mean, we, your, your fundamental approaches to design are, are broadly applicable, right? Which is why we can be in so many different spaces. I was just talking about all the different places we're going to market. And so as, as David comes to me and says, hey, you know, we really, we, we should take the platform here next and there's this great opportunity. Uh, and then, you know, for, from us at, at the <coughs> core, we do what we do. Right, which is you know we go out, we we look, uh, you know we we look at the user experience fundamentals, the 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 journey that people are going on, the persona analysis, the empathy maps, and and that informs our design process, which informs our development process, and you know we we can move through and just keep doing it. So, so your approach is is very much collaborative, um, and and you're not doing one-offs. I mean, you, yeah, you, you you could, but you're thinking about repeatability. You're thinking about sort of a you know, building, a, for lack of a better word, your own platform internally, right? Yeah. Um, the world is becoming a platform-centric world. <laughs> everything <laughs> is a service. Yeah, everything everything, is, everything a service. is a service. API economy. Yeah, yeah. So what's your, how do you guys, what's the lingua franca internally to KPMG and with your customers around that that capability, I mean, do you call it a platform? Do you have your own platform? That's yeah. your IP? It, it really is a solution. It is our IP, mm -hmm. um, but it's a solution that is built to reside in each each client's cloud environment. So in this case, a, a client service now um, instance is where our source code, which we deliver to the client, will reside. Um, we uh, we see this as as um, changing the rules of the game that the the SaaS providers in the talent space have have, have dictated over the last 15 to 20 years of now old older technology. And we really believe it it is a solution. It's not a tool. It's not an app. It's a solution that helps transformation and helps business effectiveness. Well, human capital management, that whole market space is changing quite dramatically. Yep. I mean, I guess it started with uh, the Oracle acquisition of PeopleSoft. Larry Ellison used to Teleo. denigrate yeah. people that uh, wrote checks, not code. Then he wrote yeah. a big check for PeopleSoft and it started this, right? You mentioned Taleo, yep. success yeah. factors. Yeah. And then all of a sudden <coughs> ServiceNow comes into the equation. People are like, are they competing with Workday? We were mentioned, we didn't yeah. have to mention Workday. They're another sort yeah. of disruptor. So that whole space has been you know, really changing quite dramatically. It's the talk of the town. UX, UI is a big part of that conversation. Where, where do you see that all going? Yeah, it's a... Uh, it's a, I mean, it's, it's a great point. So, you know, it's funny, ServiceNow uses Workday internally. Uh, <laughs> and probably vice versa. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 pro and probably yeah. vice versa. Uh, it's, you know, we can, we can do a lot of things with these, these different platforms, but I think at the end of the day, you know, we're not trying to go out and be a software company, and we're, you know, keeping G's not, we're not going to go out and try and compete in that way. So, you know, we have a solution to improve business metrics. I mean, but that, that's really what KPMG does when we solve business problems. So, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, here's this, you know, we have a solution that's going to add value through improving these following metrics. Happens to look great, that's a benefit, but you know, at you know, at the end of the day, and, and so can we bring a set of those solutions that can move metrics all across your organization? Absolutely, and that's what we're going to build. Well, and so I, I, you know, and I understand KPMG. You guys are technology agnostic, and you should, as well you should be. Mm -hmm. I have my customer. Sure. I got to trust that yeah. you're not going to jam yeah. some technology, yeah, I mean, some mutual fund that you get yeah. a big commission on. No, I mean, yeah, so, exactly. yeah. so, but. The market is changing. The technology underpinning human capital management is changing dramatically, and you guys are having to respond to that. So I guess the last question is, where do you see this all going, David? What's the what's the future look like of of HR and human capital management, or whatever sort of term you want to use? Well, you know, within the HR environment itself, you see a mass centralization of activities, right? So uh, global business services, shared services, um, it's really driving the economies of scale throughout the organization itself. Um, where we see this going is where our clients are going to take us. Um, what we know is there is a tremendous opportunity to help organizations, help our clients continue to refine their business practices, um, to continue to um, streamline those business practices. If we can help them do that and provide them a, a, a pretty significant technology solution to supplement those improved business practices, that's where we're wanting to take and that's where we want to let them take us. All right, we'll leave it there. David, Mark, thanks very much for coming thanks on theCUBE. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back. This is theCUBE. We're live from Knowledge 15 at the Mandalay Bay. We'll be right back.